Hey everybody, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about separation techniques. In an earlier video we discussed uh, how all matter can be classified into two main categories, pure substances and mixtures. And we said that if you have a mixture and you wanted to separate the components of that mixture, then a physical process would have to take place, some sort of physical process would have to take place in order to separate the components of that mixture. And we said for pure substances like a compound, like water, uh, a chemical process is going to have to take place to separate the hydrogens from the oxygen in a water molecule, which is a pure substance, right? So mixtures can be separated through a physical process, while pure substances can be separated through a chemical process. And today in this little video here, we're going to talk about uh, six different ways that we can separate a mixture, and then we're going to talk about uh, electrolysis. So let's jump right in and take a look. Okay, so the very first separation technique we're going to talk about is called centrifugation. Okay, and we use this to separate a mixture. Centrifugation, it says right here, is the process of separating a mixture based on the densities of the particles in that mixture. Okay, so if we were to ask, hey, what physical property does centrifug centrifugation uh, work off of? It's based on the density of the particles in that substance. So let's take a look at an example here. If we take a look at an example, when you go to the doctor's office or a, a nurse visit, you might have to have your blood drawn. So they're going to put it in a little vial like you see right here. And blood is a, is a mixture. It's a mixture of red blood cells, of plasma, of white blood cells. So all these things are mixed together to form our blood. And so they're going to take a sample of this blood. They're going to put it in this little vial here. And they're going to stick it in this, this machine right here, which is called a centrifuge. Right? They're going to stick this little vial in these, in these little holes right here. They're going to close the lid. They're going to turn it on. And this centrifuge is going to spin at a high rate of speed. And what ends up happening is that the more dense red blood cells end up going to the bottom while the less dense blood plasma ends up going to the top. So after a couple minutes, they're going to press the stop button. They're going to lift this little lid up. They're going to pull the vial out, and your blood is going to look like this. Okay, So it looked like this before. It looked like this after. This mixture of blood has been separated into red blood cells down below here. And what's left over is all the plasma on the top. So how does this work? Well, if we take a look right here, red blood cells have a density that is greater than the blood plasma. And therefore, when you put this in a centrifuge, the red blood cells are going to go to the bottom due to their density being greater than the density of plasma. So centrifugation is the process of separating a mixture based on the densities of the particles in that mixture. And it's important to understand that this is a physical process. Anytime that we're separating the components of a mixture, it's going to be a physical process. So let's take a look at the next one. All right, so the next uh, separation technique that we can use to separate a mixture is called chromatography. All right, and it says right here that chromatography is the separation of a mixture in which the components move at different rates. And we're usually going to use chromatography when we're trying to separate the components of an ink or a dye. All right, so for example, if we take a look right here, this right here is special chromatography paper. Okay, it's chromatography paper. And if we put a little drop of black ink on here for example black ink is a mixture it's a ma it's a, it's a mixture of several different other pigments or dyes and so if we place this uh, chromatography paper in this jar and down at the bottom here we have a solution of methanol which helps to aid in the chromatography process over time what's going to end up happening if we take a look over here is that black ink is going to separate into the different colors that make it up, the different inks or dyes that are used to make up black ink. For example, black ink will separate into blue, into green, and into red. Okay, if we take a look right here, this green uh, ink is going to separate into blue and, and yellow pigment. Alright, so chromatography is the separation of a mixture in which the components move at different rates, usually when separating the components of an ink or dye. So let's take a look at the next example. All right, next we're going to talk about filtration. Filtration, it says right here, is the mechanical separation or physical uh, separation of a mixture based on the particle size uh, of the particles in that mixture. So if we take a look right here at some examples, this coffee filter right here, right, when you make a cup of coffee in the morning, 
you're going to fill this, uh, this, this coffee filter up with, with coffee grounds. This coffee filter has tiny microscopic holes in it. You're then going to add water to this, and so you have a mixture of coffee grounds and water. And so what happens is the microscopic uh, water molecules pass through the tiny little holes in this coffee filter, uh, leaving behind the coffee grounds, and so you're able to enjoy uh, a sip from your, your coffee. Uh, rather than having to chew your coffee in the morning. If we take a look right here, when, you're, when you make pasta, you're going to use a colander, right, to separate the mixture of water and pasta. And if you go to the beach when you were a kid, maybe your parents gave you one of those little sifters. You sifted through sand and the tiny little uh, sand particles would fall through the holes and you'd be left with uh, your treasure left in this little beach sand sifter. And last but not least, we have a kitchen strainer right here. Okay, so filtration is the mechanical or physical separation of a mixture based on the size of the particles that are in that mixture. Let's take a look at the next example here. All right, the next way that we can separate the components of a mixture is to use something called distillation. And it says right here that distillation is the process of separating a mixture of two or more liquids based on the boiling points of those liquids. All right, so it says two or more liquids. However, you can use distillation to separate the components of a mixture that contains a salt, I'm sorry, a solid and a liquid as well. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Right here we have a little Florence flask and in this Florence flask there's a mixture of ethanol uh, and water, right? Ethanol is the type of alcohol that is used in wine and spirits. So we have a mixture of water and ethanol right here. Furthermore, we know that the boiling point of ethanol is 78 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So we put this little Florence flask on this on this hot plate here. We turn it on to say 85 degrees. What's going to happen? Well, at 78 degrees, the ethanol is going to vaporize, right? It's going to boil. It's begin it's going to begin to to vaporize and turn into ethanol vapor. Those vapors are going to come up into this little column here. They have nowhere to go because of this rubber stopper and they're going to hit this little tube right here which is called the condenser. This condenser is very cold. It's hooked up to a faucet of some sort where there's cold water running through this condenser here. And so uh, when this hot ethanol vapor hits this cold condensing tube, what happens? Well, that ethanol vapor turns back into liquid ethanol and eventually will drip into this little graduated cylinder here. So if we do this for a, a little bit of time here, we'll end up with pure ethanol over here, and then we'll be left over with pure H2O or water over here. So distillation is the process of separating a mixture of two or more liquids based on the boiling points of the liquids in the mixture. All right, so this is also going to be a physical process. Uh, no chemical change is taking place here, right? So this is a physical process. And it's important to keep in mind that this says two or more liquids. However, if this was a, a, a mixture of salt water, well, we can easily do the same thing. The, the water will boil off at 100 degrees Celsius. It will condense and go into this graduated cylinder here. And because the salt has a much higher boiling point, it will remain behind. All right, so that's distillation. Let's take a look at the next example. Okay, decantation. You guys probably use this uh, quite a bit without even knowing it. It says decantation is the careful pouring off of a liquid uh, Whoops, from a mixture containing both a liquid and a solid. So for example, let's suppose we had a beaker of water and marbles here. So we have a mixture containing uh, water and marbles and we wanted to separate the water from uh, from those marbles. How can we do that? Well, we can use decantation. We can simply very carefully pour off the liquid from this beaker here into this beaker here. And very carefully doing so, not are making sure we don't pour any marbles in here and in the end we will end up having uh, water in this beaker here and marbles in this beaker here so we've separated the components of that mixture using a process called decantation the careful pouring off of a liquid from a mixture containing both a liquid and a solid magnetic separation is another separation technique and it says right here that magnetic separation is the process in which magnetically susceptible material is extracted from a mixture using a magnet. 
Uh, this separation technique can be useful in mining iron as it is attracted to the magnet. So let's suppose we have a little dish here and this dish here contains some sulfur and uh, some iron filings. So it's a mixture of sulfur and iron filings and we want to separate this mixture. Well, we can use a magnet to do so, right? We know that iron is magnetic. So if we bring this magnet over this dish here, the iron filings are going to jump onto this magnet here and then we can put them in this little dish right here for our iron filings and what will be left over after we get done doing that here will be a bunch of sulfur okay so we've separated this mixture based on the magnetic properties of the particles uh, in that mixture and once again this is going to be a physical uh, process no chemical change has take, taken place so so far we've talked about one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, separation techniques of a mixture, and every one of those has been a physical process. Let's now turn to uh, the separation of a compound or a pure substance using a chemical process and talk about electrolysis. All right, last one. We're going to talk about electrolysis. Electrolysis is the chemical separation of the hydrogen atoms from the oxygen atoms in a water molecule. All right, so this right here is the only one that we're going to talk about today that is a chemical process. Electro means electricity, and lysis means to split. So what does this mean? Well, we're going to split the, uh, the water molecule here using electricity. And here's what happens. When you pass electricity through a water molecule here, it's going to break the hydrogen bonds to this little oxygen right here. So what you're going to end up having in the end is hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So if we take a look, we started with water, we're ending with two totally different substances, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So this is going to be a chemical change. Now in a later video in our electrochemistry unit, we'll talk about how electrolysis works in greater detail. But for now, just understand that electrolysis is a chemical process. It's the chemical separation of the, uh, the hydrogen atoms from the oxygen atom using electricity and what you're going to end up with uh, is hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. And if we take a look over here, this is, a, this is an electrolysis apparatus, and here's how it works. You're going to pour water right into here. You're going to put a little diluted sulfuric acid in there just to make sure that the electric current is conducted. And so what ends up happening, you'll pour your water in here. The tubes will fill up over here and over here. And you're going to hook these electrodes up to this, this little battery right here. And when you do that, you're going to see a bunch of bubbles appearing in this column here and in this column here. And what's happening is that the water is being converted into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Okay. So what you'll end up with over time, and we'll talk about this in greater detail in our electrochemistry unit, is you'll end up with hydrogen gas in one of these columns here. And you'll end up with oxygen gas in another one of these columns right here. But for now, just understand that electrolysis electrolysis is the chemical separation of the hydrogen atoms from the oxygen atom in a water molecule and that is going to be a chemical process. Okay, so we talked about six physical processes where we can separate a mixture and then we talked about one chemical process where we can separate a pure substance, in this case water, which is a compound. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click the little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and feel free to leave any comments in the comment section down below and I hope you guys found this helpful.